Well, good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. I just want to thank everybody for attending today's uh, Zip Forms Advanced Webinar on the Share Button feature. Um, just want to welcome everybody here today uh, for this. Um, I know we are recording today's webinar, so um, this will be a great time. Sorry, my brain. <laughs> I, I haven't even fully woken up yet. My coffee hasn't kicked in, but it will. Uh, I apologize for that. So real quickly, just a quick introduction of who I am. My name is Anthony. I work with uh, Rancho Southeast Association of Realtors. I've actually been associated with associations now uh, for close to 18 years. Started off in the MLS department. So I know guaranteed I'll speak to everybody attending today regarding rules, regulations, violations, all that fun stuff. What I'm also involved with is our outreach program and Rancho Southeast Association of Realtors outreach program was designed or is designed to give you training on all your tools and products, both in house as well as out at the offices. Um, so basically what you'll do is you'll probably see me walk, you know, around either at the board or at your office, uh, giving you training on various tools and products like MLS. I train on how to run searches, how to modify listings, complete CMAs, things like that, which you might have seen some of our evening classes on. I also train on zip forms, which is our big topic today, but basically how to create a transaction, um, how to digitally sign a contract, and of course, all the advanced tools that zip forms has to offer. And of course, I also train on technology. I like to think of myself as a big old geek from time to time, even though there are people that are way more geekier than I am. I do love showing agents how to utilize their technology to better themselves in the real estate industry. So especially today, <coughs> excuse me, uh, especially uh, today where we are really restricted in our showings and what we can do and how we can market and all this. Definitely, this is a very great time to start taking advantage of all of this amazing technology at, at your fingertips. More and more people are beginning to start to do webinars uh, or virtual meetings with their clients. Agents are now beginning to utilize their cell phone devices at a showing more so than just opening up a lockbox, but being able to peruse around the house um, and do a virtual open house through Facebook Live, through YouTube Live, um, 3D and 360 uh, video camera paper or uh, camera work is now all of a sudden a thing that's really here. So if anything, with this whole coronavirus um, pandemic that has come about, it has really made agents become really innovative in today's industry. So we're just going to help you out with that. And this is where a feature in zip forms is going to help you out as well called the share button. Excuse me. Now zip forms has a lot of great tools that you as an agent can utilize. And sh the share button is one of those. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways that we can utilize the share button today to be able to get what we need done and get documents to people quickly and easily. Now, just real quickly, what is, the share button. The share button uh, basically is a feature in zip forms which allows you to give someone access into your zip forms and specifically into that transaction to do various things. In most cases, we're going to be able to utilize the share button to um, share out PDFs or numerous PDF documents. So once we get documents signed or uploaded or what have you, we now get large amounts of documents very quickly and easily to the necessary parties, like the other agent on the other side of the transaction, our title, our lender, our, our lender, our assistant, our transaction coordinator, everything that we need for them to be able to access the various different documents without having to create necessarily multiple different emails, right? And we'll go up a little bit more into that. The share button also allows us to give access to someone to be able to fill in documents. So great for a client when we're talking about filling in certain documents like the TDS or the SPQ, stands for seller property questionnaire, transfer disclosure statement, or other documents like that, whereby we are restricted in, in what we can fill out for the client. This now allows us to send out the document very quickly and easily. 
excuse me, for them to actually fill it in. And we'll elaborate a little bit more on that. So where does this all begin? It all begins now in our zip forms. So very easily, we're gonna go over two steps. One, I'm gonna go over how this is gonna be very beneficial for those of you who are listing agents to be able to send out certain do documents or certain disclosures to your client very quickly and easily for them to fill out, okay? And then I'm gonna show you at the end or after the end of digital signing, how to get large amounts of documents to the various different parties for them to view, save, and print these documents. So we'll talk about that. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is us being a listing agent. Typically when we're a listing agent, we create the transaction, we add in our various different documents, <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a little tickle in my throat. And here we've got our various different documents. And a lot of times what we have here is we've got the listing agreement done. We get it sent out. We get it signed. But then after the listing agreement gets signed, now the client's got to fill in or we got to get certain disclosures done typically your SPQ and your TDS, right? Especially if they're owner occupied. Now the problem with this is that on, the, on these particular forms, you as an agent are very limited to what you are allowed to fill in. Here we notice the tan areas are areas that I can fill in, but then we've got these dark grayed out areas in a form that we as an agent cannot fill in for our client. So, we are really limited to getting this document filled out. So how do we get this document filled out? Well, we have several ways. Now we can go the long route or we can go the short route. Now the long route is this. I can take this document and with the send button, email this document as a PDF to my client. The client gets the PDF document, they now print it out, they fill it out, they rescan it, they send it back to me. Now, when I get the scan back, now what do I, as their agent, have to do? I now have to decipher this chicken scratch, right? Sometimes maybe something's not filled in right. Maybe um, these little lines, their writing is so tiny that I can't read it or it's unlegible. Or maybe somebody has marked something, scratched through it, marked it again, then initialed it, then scratched through it one more time. So how do I know if it's filled in correctly, right? So then I usually have to get somebody to refill it out again. That's one way. The other way is through eSign. Here in eSign, seller one does have the capability of filling out this form as well as sign and initial the form. So the sellers both one and two, maybe even three and four can actually sign and initial this form, but seller one has the responsibility of filling out the form. Now here's the problem that I've seen and have heard. The seller doesn't fill it out correctly. Maybe they forgot to mark the water heater. Maybe they forgot to mark what type of water heater, right? Now what do I have to do? I now have to either resend it to them for new e-signatures, whereby then I get it back a second time, and this time, the second time, different things are filled in. And the things that were filled in were not rechecked off again. Right? Maybe this time they marked the water heater but forgot to mark what type of water heater. Or, you know, they had marked no's before, but now they mark a yes. Or yes is before and now they mark no's. So then what do I have to do? I have to now send it out for a third, maybe even a fourth time. Right? Let's help eliminate this. This is where the share button is going to help us out. Because what we're now going to do is we're going to give the client the capability of filling out the form before signing, which allows us as the agent to review the document, okay? So what we're going to do in this case is we're gonna utilize the share button to allow seller one to fill out the TDS and or SPQ very quickly and easily for them to fill it out. I now get a chance to review it before digital signing. So if they do make a mistake, I can have them fix the mistake live time okay and by the way these will be live time edits so here we go we've got the td uh we've got the tds the spq 
added in. As you know, noticed here, I could not fill out the form. Now, by the way, we're only going to send out the one form, but this will happen with any document. So now, viewing the documents just like so, I'm going to come over to where the top left corner to where it says share and click. From here, I'm now going to send a private share to the client. So I'm going to hit the little plus icon. And now I'm going to select the signer or the the sharer or the sharee, I should say. In this case, John. Now when I hit done, I'm now going to change some settings. So the first thing I'm going to change is when I stop the share. You'll notice here that this is a date that's about a month out that automatically defaults to say no longer can they have access to the document to at all. Now, typically, do I, as an agent, want to give the client a month to fill out the form? Probably not. I'm going to click on the down arrow, and now I'm going to select the date. So maybe I'm only going to give them two or three days. So maybe I say, all right, they need to complete it by the 24th. Now, before I hit next, the most important thing I need to do here, and I'm going to highlight it, is I'm going to give them edit rights to a form. Now you can only edit a zip form document. Okay, you cannot edit a PDF. So if I was sending out PDF documents, I cannot edit the PDF because zip forms cannot is not a PDF editor. So the only forms someone can edit are the unsigned fillable contracts like the TDS and the SBQ. But technically this person, I can give them access to any and all of the documents in the transaction for them to edit and fill in. So real quickly, to leave the seller uh, example here, those of you who are mentors to mentees or mentees to mentors, you could actually send a share to your mentor or mentee to have them fill in a document in a transaction or send something to a team member in your team and give them edit rights into a form. And before it goes out for signatures, this gives you the team lead, the mentor, a chance or the mentee a chance to review the changes, right? Or the review what type of documents are being filled out. So I think as a training tool, or as a team leader uh, monitoring your agents, um, you can now give them edit rights into form. So you could put your transaction together and say, okay, Bob, I want you to fill this in and I wanna see what type of trans or what you're putting in on an offer or filling out a listing agreement so I can at least get a chance to review it to educate you on how to write better offers or write better listing agreements, okay? So this is a really good tool for that. So in this case, what we're going to now do is we're going to give John and Toinette edit rights into a form. When I now hit next, I now select what document or documents they can not only view, but edit. So in this case, I'm going to give them edit rights into the TDS. Okay. If I wanted to, I could also select the SPQ. So typically I would select both, but for demo purposes today, we're just gonna select the one. And now I'm gonna hit send or save and send down here at the bottom right corner. Now, the moment I do that, an immediate email is generated and sent off to the client within 30 seconds. So now John Antoinette now is being given, oh, and that's funny. It, added it but it didn't take it away there we go the ability to fill in the tds that's how easy it is to send out a share request to someone it's you're basically now giving them edit rights to go into and view rights to go into this transaction to view and edit this one or multiple documents are there any questions on this Okay, well, if there are no questions on this, then let's go and show you what a signer experiences. So here we're just going to 
refresh my transactions here real quick and now I'm just going to go into the email. I now, John Antoinette, am now going to be called. So what I would say agents is to make sure that you go over the contracts with your clients, right? Well, I know that you're limited to when it comes to risk management, what you're allowed and not allowed to say or guide somebody, especially filling out the TDS or SPQ, right? But we still wanna be available for that person just in case they have certain questions about the lines, right? Or about the contract. So what we're going to do is that after we send out that share request, we're gonna give our client a call. Hey, John, I just sent you the TDS for you to fill in. I'll sit here on hold while you go through the steps because I wanna make sure that you get in and be able to fill out the document. And of course, I wanna be here just in case. So, John says, thank you very much. He goes, okay, not a problem. John, I need you to go in your email. John goes into his email. He sees that there's an email sent for me, his agent, and says, John, Anthony has sent you a collaboration request. Okay, he goes into the email. From here, John reads the email, and now he's gonna go down and click on this big green button that says, let's view the documents. Now, for John to edit the documents or to go into this account, he needs to now create a user ID and password, okay? So he needs to create an account. Now, when John clicks on create an account for the very first time, there's a couple of choices here that I wanna point out. Besides John being able to fill in his information and more importantly, create a username and create a password, what we want to see here is that John does have a choice to create an account using his Facebook login or his Google Gmail login. Now, I don't know about you guys, <laughs> and I don't know why this choice is here, but I would really discourage these two choices. The reason why is that, as we all probably are aware, that today, in today's technology, there's a lot of companies out there and a lot of social media platforms out there that track everybody's activity, right? Facebook tracks every post that you write, every person you friend, everything that you write or view or buy or anything like that. Same thing with Google because they understand that knowledge is power. Now, the reason why I discourage creating an account using your Facebook logins or your Gmail logins is this, is that now I'm telling Facebook and Gmail what it is that I as the homeowner am doing with my home. If I give them access to, or if I log in using these accounts, now I've given them access to know, one, I'm selling my house, two, I'm telling them what types of documents I'm filling in, which now keys off lots of algorithms in their databases to in their data collection to know that I'm selling my house and that I need to be encouraged to maybe work with agents or other vendors to get myself moved or uh, certain advertisements and and of course crazy enough they can they can almost tell based on the algorithms that I'm filling in disclosures so they now know that I'm filling out disclosures about my home. So what I would discourage my clients from doing is ever logging into something like this with their Facebook or Gmail. And that's because when it comes to privacy and data protection, these two entities do not need to know that I'm selling my house and what disclosures I'm filling in, okay? I know that was kind of long-winded, uh, thing to say, but I think it needs to be said, okay? Are there any questions on that? Okay, sounds pretty cut and dry, right? All right, so basically what we're gonna do here is John Antoinette now creates an account. So he creates a username, he's gonna create a password. Very simple, okay? And then he's gonna hit create an account. Now because I've I'm using this email as a demo account. It's gonna ask me some extra things here. Do I wanna continue with the same email? Yes, I do. So I'm just gonna click 
continue and create and now it's creating this account for for john uh john antoinette with this particular username so now john goes into the share from here it's going to ask him to read through the legal consent of what's going to happen so just have him read through this hopefully he will agree to the terms of usage and say okay or continue now from here the profile has been updated and in about two or three seconds here we should see and i might need to refresh this here See, I, you guys aren't the only ones that go through technical issues from time to time. What I should see here is the following. There we go. So I'm defaulting into my dashboard. Now, real quickly, we've got a nice little date calendar. We've got a documents button. We, had, we can send secured messages to our agent, this, that, and the other. But most importantly, over here towards the, the left, I get to see this big box here. It says, reminds me who my agent is, okay? So right away, I can tell a couple of things. First and foremost, my agent's email and phone number. What's nice about this is I can send them a direct email. I can actually chat with them or I can direct call them. Now what's cool about this is that I know that my agent's online. How do I know my agents online besides talking with them on the phone right now? Well, it's with these buttons here. These buttons are green. So I know that right now my agent Tony is actively online so I can send them a live time chat or I can give them a call. Okay. They're in their zip forms. Now, if they weren't in their zip forms, this should be grayed out because I've seen that once or twice. So if this is grayed out, that means that I can still send them this information. It's just that now I, as their, their client, have to wait for the response. But again, as, as we're sending out a share request, especially to fill out documents, we as the agent are always going to call our clients to make sure that we can walk them through this step. Okay. At this point, what we're now going to do is tell the client, okay, Tony, or okay, John, I want you to click on the documents button here, right in the middle. When they click on that, they now should see the documents that I'm sharing with them. Now you'll notice here that there are no PDFs. Why? Because I didn't share PDFs. But you'll notice that the document of the TDS is filled in or is blue. And it has the .zfx extension. This means that they can edit this document. So because we gave them edit rights, John now has a capability of clicking on this document that we've shared. And now instead of everything being grayed out, it's now blue. So now this gives me or tells John, okay, John, everything in blue is something that you can fill in. So what I need you to do is fill in everything about your home that you need to disclose okay so now they can start clicking on these choices and let's zoom in here just a little bit if i can there we go so here john's the seller he's got a range and an oven and a microwave and a dishwasher he does have a water heater that is gas or i do have a water heater that is gas um i do have central heating and air, I do have sprinklers, and let's see, um, public water sewer, um, I do have a garage that is attached, and of course I've got a number of remotes, and of course, you know, meth lab in the backyard, please no smoking. whatever we need to do, right? We just fill in this document. Now at this point, John can say, okay, guess what? I'm done. And he hits save. 
and I go, okay, John, not a problem. Let me get a chance to review it. So now I'm going back to agent mode here. John tells me he's filled in the form. Okay, John, make sure that you hit save. Great, you hit save. Don't log out yet. I'm going to review your document. So now I'm back in zip forms. John's told me he's reviewed the document. So I'm going to go and refresh my transaction list. I'm now going to go into his. Sorry, somebody knocked on my door. Um, from here, what we're going to do is immediately go to our documents area. And now I'm immediately going to choose that document that I shared. So I'm going to click on the TDS. Here it'll take it a second to upload. And by the way, does anybody have any questions so far? Does that look pretty simple? Excuse me one second. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. And then, of course, it's taking its sweet time here. When all else fails, let's reboot. Oh, I do have a question. Can he sign at the same time? Uh, unfortunately, he cannot sign at the same time. This is only meant to fill in first. If you want him to fill it or fill it in and sign, then you're going to make sure that you send it out through e-signatures. But as I had mentioned earlier, if he fills out something incorrectly, I now have to resend the document out for e-signatures. So what we want to do is make sure that they fill it out first correctly. So this is where the share button comes in is that I can now have them fill it out. I can now review it. So here what we're going to hopefully do, knock on some wood, here is be able to open up the transaction. And it looks like all of a sudden zip forms is starting to run super slow all of a sudden. Eventually, I love the I love the blue ring of despair here. <laughs> and I swear it usually runs way faster than this, so I don't know. Unresponsive. OK, well, let's exit those pages. That's not a very good thing here. I think my last zip forms class, something like this happened, and it turned out that they were somehow doing maintenance in the middle of the day, which is not helpful for when you're trying to do contracts. Uh, can we send it, and we have another question here, can we send it to two sellers so that the other seller can see what he's filling in? You can, um, but they can't go into the document at the same time. And Technically, only seller one has the capability of actually filling in the, the contract. So no matter what, seller one has the, has the capability of filling out the contract only. Seller two, I can send them the share, but they can only view the document. Um, they can't put any edits on it. So we're going to be limited in that in the share. Oh, you're welcome. All right. So. Here we're going to pull up the contract. Hopefully this will work. There we go. And we now see here that the TDS has now been filled in with John's edits. So I can look at this and I can go, all right, John, I see that you filled in this. I feel see that you filled in that. Um, are you sure that you're not missing anything? And then all of a sudden I come down to page two and I go, John, you didn't finish filling out page two. I need you to answer questions, uh, what is this, two through 16. So I need you to fill out section two, please, or page two. So John goes, okay, not a problem. 
Thanks for letting me know. So John still being logged in, and this is why I tell John don't log out. John can now come down and fill in the rest of the document. Okay. Just like so. Okay, John, make sure you hit save. Great, John hit save. It saved the information. Okay, now I don't see it here yet, right? So I'm gonna go back out. I'm gonna refresh my transaction list again. Go back in. Go to my documents and now click on that TDS. And now here on page two, I now get to see the rest of John's edits. Now with all that filled in, I can now come over to eSign and send this out to John and Martha for them now to sign this document or these documents. Okay, so now we have all that filled in very quickly and easily. Okay, anybody like that for the share? So now, how can else, or how else can we use the share? Well, we can use this share to get documents out or mass amounts of documents out to other parties very quickly and easily. So this is great for when you start getting documents that are signed, uh, this, that, and the other, and you need to get them to multiple people or multiple documents to multiple people, but instead of us having to create multiple emails in some scenarios, like as an example, maybe I'm the buyer's agent and I need to submit an offer to my client or submit an offer to the listing agent. And instead of me going into the transaction whereby I email as one email to the agent, the signed packet, like the purchase agreement, and then I've got to go back in and go back to my computer, create an email for my internet email account with the other documents like the trans, uh, the proof of funds, earnest money deposit check, so on and so forth, right? What I'm now going to do is I'm going to utilize the share button to send out multiple documents to multiple people. And I'm just going to share out the PDF documents. So in zip forms, I'm going to utilize the add document and the add folders button to add in the various other documents like my client's financials, like their proof of funds, their tax records, their copy of their check, maybe a letter from their lender and a letter from their parents, right? So I've got those four documents here along with my other documents like the signed documents, okay? Oops, we have another question. Uh, when we send it for e-sign, will it automatically put their sign, this document, or manually? Are you, um, if you're talking about the TDS or SPQ, the TDS, SPQ automatically, whether it's DocuSign or Digital Link, have the initials and signature areas pre-placed for your signers. So you don't have to necessarily place any signatures or initials on the unsigned contract. Even though it's been filled in by the seller, East, uh, Digital Inc. and DocuSign automatically have those areas pre-placed for you on those unsigned contracts. Does that make, uh, did that help? Good. Okay, so now here what we need to do is get out the these PDF documents to our clients so or to the other agent or to our assistant or a TC or what have you. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the share button and click. And now I'm going to say start a share. But this time, the person I'm going to share the documents with may be the listing agent or maybe my assistant. And my assistant isn't here because I need them to get my file started and things like that. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to come over to the top left corner and click on create new. I'm going to type in my assistant's name. Type in her email address or his email address. And now I'm going to choose a role. In this case, I do believe we're going to go with other. 
and their role is assistant or agent assistant. And now when I hit done, hopefully, We have another question here. Uh, let's see. You said only one seller can edit uh, in the share. Uh, that is true, Marcel. Only seller one can edit the form. If we shared uh, with the seller two, will they be able to make the edits or is this only for seller one? It's only for seller one, unfortunately. It used to be either sellers, but recently in the past four months, um, CAR, put that role back to seller one to fill in. So unfortunately, the share put button only allows seller one to fill out the disclosures. So it's really important that the two sellers actually talk and or we have this conversation with them about who would like to edit the forms. And I don't know why. Fine. I'll have to figure out why that form or that area of selecting the other role isn't working. So I'll have to talk to them about that. But here we select their role. Here um, I can now give them a time frame. So maybe in this case, I'm giving my assistant a full month to access these documents or the other agent. Now, when I hit next, instead of selecting the unsigned contracts, I'm now going to choose. The PDF files. And actually, I'll go back up. Come on. Let's try that again. There we go. Now I'm going to select the other documents, so the offer, so on and so forth, the PEAD form, and now we're going to hit send and save. Send. Oh, and we have other documents that we want to get to them. So the client financials, the tax records, bank statements, so on and so forth. So now what we've done is we're collaborating with these other documents. So here we can add all those in. So now the assistant or the other agent on the other side of the transaction now gets the link just like the seller did in our earlier example. But this time because these are PDFs and I did not give them edit rights because they, they shouldn't be editing my contracts, I didn't turn on the edit form. You're absolutely right, Marcel. I did not turn on the edit form because, again, these are PDF files. So I do, one, zip forms can't edit PDFs, but two, I don't want the other agent on the other side of the transaction to modify any of my documents. So these are the signed contracts, the purchase agreement that's been signed by my clients, the PEAD form, that's been signed by my clients, the tax records, the proof of funds, right? These are all forms that I want to get over to the listing agent side. So now, or my assistant, or my TC, or the lender, or what have you. So now what happens is when they go in to the email, they'll say, hey, by the way, here are the documents, but because they're PDFs, this person now can only view the PDF on their on their computer. They can print a copy or they can download a copy onto their computer. Okay. So now my assistant downloads the copies, then they can upload them into my office backend system by for my broker. Or if this is the other agent, 
on the other side of the transaction, they can now take those PDFs, download them, and then go into their listing transaction. And on the listing transaction, they can upload their documents. So now that all of a sudden they've got offers in their transaction to which now if they upload the PDFs, they can now send them out for digital signatures. Now, what's nice about that is that the listing agent gets the signed offer or gets an offer signed. They can now share the signed offer back to me, the buying agent. Now I download the fully executed accepted offer. I can now share those or download those and then upload them and now share those signed PDFs or that signed offer to my clients. And now we've got small emails. Now at the end of the day, what does the listing agent now need to get to me and my clients? Besides the TDS and the SPQ, the other 48 mandatory disclosures, right? Well, that's a lot of emails going back and forth. Well, now the listing agent can get all 48 disclosures signed, sealed, and now with the sent share button, deliver all 48, 68 disclosures to me, the buying agent, in one small tiny email link through the share button to which now I download them, upload them, and now I can send them to my clients for them to review, sign, and accept. Okay, does that make sense? And let me see if that share request, oh, there it goes. So now when they click on this to view it, they create their account. So here, the title company, the assistant, the listing agent, whoever, now will get these documents. And hopefully this will come up real quick here. There we go. They go and look at the documents and now here are the folders with all of the PDF files. So now I can view it. I can now only download it or print it, right? And again, because these are PDFs, I can download or print these files as that sharer. Because I, I cannot edit the PDFs and I can go back and look at the signed purchase agreement. And remember, I only shared two of those documents in that one folder, that one signed folder. But here is the signed purchase agreement. Here is my signed P, uh, PEAD, so on and so forth. When the seller fi uh, fills the TDS and SPQ, will it send it back? No, there's nothing to send back. They're actually in my zip forms. That's why if you noticed when I when the the seller one uh, filled in the TDS and they just hit save, I as the agent just went into zip forms and I saw that the TDS was automatically filled in. So there's nothing being sent back and forth in that case. So if I'm getting the seller to fill out the disclosure, I am giving them access into the transaction to fill in that document. Same thing here with the the PDFs. I'm giving the uh, other agent or my assistant or the TC or the uh, title lender escrow people access to view or download copies of these signed PDFs for their files, right? So. They can't take out these documents, but I'm giving them access into the transaction to do what they need to with these documents. Now, unfortunately, if I'm the listing agent getting a sign, you know, this purchase agreement, you'll notice here that there's no choice to e-sign it, right? So I can't send it out through my e-signatures until I download it, upload it in my own zip forms. So I'm now 
making sure that they have access to this. Let's see, another question. It automatically comes in my folder. You've already got the uh, you've already got the document in the the transaction because you've uploaded it into your transaction. What you're doing is is you're giving them access to it. So what I want you to think of zip forms in this sense. You've heard of uh, cloud drives, correct? Like Google Drive or Dropbox or iCloud or um, OneDrive, correct? In those systems, you can give people to access into those cloud drives to view, save, and print documents, or in some cases, actually edit files. So in this case, what we're doing is we're taking zip forms and making it into a cloud drive accessible system to certain parties involved in the transaction. And we're giving them permissions to do certain things. So we're giving the seller access into the transaction to fill out certain documents like the TDS and the SPQ, or we're giving the listing agent into my buyer's transaction access to view the signed PDFs that I've gotten to submit an offer for their property, okay? So at this, at this point, that's what we're doing. Um, and the other part of her question is, at this time, we have two TDS, one filled and one unfilled. No, you only have one TDS. You can only have one fillable document in the transaction. So there's no two TDS. The only time there's a second TDS is when you sign it and it's a PDF file that's no longer editable. So yes, you may get two T TDSs at that time, one that's fillable and one that's signed, right? So what do we do with that signed one? We send it over to the buying agent, right? So that their clients can review our disclosure. Now that buying agent downloads it, uploads it, gets their buyer to sign it to stating that they've reviewed it. They now share it back to me, the listing agent, with that acknowledgement, okay? Why would we, sh uh, why would we share documents versus just emailing them? The reason why you do that is that most emails are size limit. So if you've got 48 documents, right, or in some cases, the purchase agreement being, what is it, uh, 16 pages, and you're sending a few other documents, now all of a sudden you're hitting a size limit in an email, which most people's size limits are five megabytes, okay? Here with the share, I'm giving them a link. So I can have a thousand documents in the transaction, right? And when I share all 1,000 documents with to that person, they get one small email link because the there are no attachments in the email. It's a link. So now that person, I'm giving them access to download it, view it, print it, or in some cases, filling out the document. So the share button in this case is huge because we can now get large amounts of documents over to somebody very quickly and easily without having to create, in some cases, five or six emails to one person, each email with two or three documents at a time to try to overcome those size limitations. Does that make sense, Marcel? Awesome. Are there any questions or any other questions on the share button? I think this is a really good tool once you begin to start practicing with it, um, especially when you're when you're talking about time is of the essence and you can't hand deliver documents to somebody or or things like that. This will now give you, and even without the stay at home order, I think this is a really good tool for when you're dealing with large amounts of documents. And say by the end of the day. As the example, the agent comes back and says, hey, Tony, I don't, you know, I think you forgot to give me this document. Okay, not a problem. Let me see what documents I did share with you. So I can pull up that person. And then all of a sudden I see the documents that I've shared. And you go, well, you know what? You're right. I am missing a document. So now what I can do is click on the add a document choice, find the other document that I need to get over to them, hit save and send. And it now sends them a brand new link 
accessing that new document. Or I go, oh, you know what? I did share it with you, but let me resend it again. And then we can do that as well. And then they can go back in and go, oh, you're right. I do see this. Now, in some cases, if it, say, the person expired, say this date came up. Well, what I can now do is go back in and elongate it. Hit save and send. It now again, again sends them a brand new link to be able to access these extra documents. Or to the same documents. Does that make sense? Was this helpful to anybody or is anybody already doing something like this? Now we are going over a new tool um, later, I think this month, and I'll have to double check my calendar, Glide. Glide is a really good tool to get the TDS and SPQ filled in. It is a free member benefit um, that I'll be going over in the next couple of weeks. Um, but I would say in general, the share button is a little bit more powerful in not only getting documents filled out, but getting the PDF files out to various other uh, people involved in the transaction. Oh, I'm so glad that you found this really informative. Thank you very much. Yes, I think the share button is a huge time saver uh, when you're coming, you know, when you think about it. I don't have to draft an email. I don't have to send out an email to an agent and then create another email for another person like the lender and I create another email for title and I create another email for my office manager or broker and then create another email for the TC, right? Here, I can just go in and hit share, select one person, choose their documents, send it out. Now I can select a new share for a new person and then select entirely different documents because my, maybe somebody else in the transaction needs to see different documents, right? Because in some cases, like, oh, I don't know, title, or um, maybe the other agent, they don't need to see my company listing agreement or my company agreement or our uh, commission agreement that we get signed, right? That's between me and my client. So instead of just choosing to email out this entire folder of all these other documents that is not relevant to the other agent, the share button allows me to pick and choose what PDF files to send to them. Just like with that seller example, first thing is they don't need to see the unsigned listing agreement because they've already seen it because they've signed it. That's why we're sending out the disclosures for them to fill in. You're welcome. Um, are there any other questions? Now, um, again, we are recording today's webinar. Everyone will get a copy of today's webinar emailed to, to them so that you have it for your records. And of course, one of the beautiful things about a recorded webinar is that you can watch it over and over again. You can pause it, you can rewind it, you can fast forward it. So um, you will get a copy of that, as well as this will be on our YouTube channel. So if we, uh, if you're ever interested in watching any of our videos, simply go to youtube.com. From here, you're gonna uh, do a quick search for our YouTube channel, which is under uh, Rancho Southeast Association. Rancho Southeast Association. From here, you're gonna choose you see our, our logo, you click on our logo, and now just go to videos and you will see all of our recorded videos and webinars, most of which are webinars, but we will have how-to videos up here very quickly that will be quite shorter. But now you can pick out from all of our various different classes that we've been hosting, all of our other recorded uh, videos. If there are no other questions, I wanna thank everybody for attending today's webinar. I hope everybody enjoyed, enjoyed it today and learned something good. If you have any questions or anything like that, please feel free to give me a call. 
My number is 949-586-6800. My extension is 104. Or you can call our main office number at 562-860-5656. Uh, or you can feel free to email me at Tony, T-O-N-Y, at ocrealtors.org. Um, I hope, again, everybody had a great and wonderful day, and I will talk to you all really, really soon. Bye-bye.